friend turns foe. Edo governorship race tears Obaseki and Shaibu's tight cord apart. Chaos generated by the rift between the Edo state governor, Governor Godwin Obaseki, and his deputy, Philip Shaibu, deteriorates as both fail to shift ground. Politics is said to be an endeavor when permanent friends and enemies do not exist. What drives those involved in the endeavor? Is personal interest which may cause them to fall out with one another if their interests do not align. More often than not, politicians have shown that they do not have the capacity to manage their differences which snowballs into bigger problems with the people they expected to represent and serve bearing the brunt of the altercation. Despite the reef, the governor at different fora said he had nothing against Shaibu's ambition while Shaibu has also apologized for some of the wrong moves he made, but it appears the chaos generated by the rift is not abating. Trouble started when Shaibu was accused of abandoning the swearing-in of commissioners last year in Benin to attend the inauguration of the National Assembly, where he met and fraternized with a former governor of the state, Oshomole, who was not on good terms with Obaseki and Shaibu. Shaibu also incurred the wrath of his boss when he made public his intention to succeed the governor. At a meeting, the governor was said to have told his close allies of his desire to take the governorship seat to Edo Central, which favors the former chairman of Sterling Bank, Aswe Igodalu, who is also said to enjoy the backing of the governor. Fearing a backlash, as the rift deepened, Shaibu approached the Federal High Court in Abuja to stop possible impeachment moves against him. In the suit marked FHC slash ABJ slash CS slash 1027 slash 2023, the Inspector General of Police, the State Security Service, the Governor of Edo State, the Speaker of the Edo State House of Assembly, and the Chief Judge of Edo State at the 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, and 5th defendants respectively. Shaibu sought an interlocutory injunction restraining the third, fourth and fifth defendants and respondents or their agent from commencing an impeachment process against him. He also prayed the court to restrain the governor of the state or another person acting on his order from harassing and preventing him from effectively discharging his duties as the state's deputy governor. The governor said, There is no plan to impeach my deputy, Comrade Philip Shaibu. The move by Shaibu seeking a court order to stop his purported impeachment is preemptive ahead of his defection to the All Progressive Congress, APC. The deputy governor has been actively engaging with senior actors both at the national and state levels of the APC, negotiating his way into their party and he is on the verge of finalizing moves to defect to the APC. Philip Shaibu has never had the courtesy to discuss his ambition with me. The last time we spoke of my successor, after the House of Assembly election, I did say that we should be patient and that our task is to try and finish well and conclude all the projects we started. Obaseki seemed to have responded to his deputies in subordination by placing revenue collection under the direct supervision of his office, which will include that of the local government, which was formerly under the deputy governor's office, while the Ministry of Sports, which is under the deputy governor's office, was taken away and his ally and in-law Sabina Chikere retired unceremoniously. Despite this, the deputy governor pledged his loyalty to his boss, Colin Obaseki, his elder brother. He added, my loyalty to the governor remains absolute. I see that everybody is in solidarity. I'm also in solidarity with the governor. I'm also declaring my unalloyed loyalty to the governor and nothing more. As for the issues that were around town when I was away, I really don't want to talk about them, especially about the governor. He's my elder brother and boss, and I don't think I should talk about anything. While residents were hoping that the situation would not degenerate any further, 
On August 28, Shaibu on Monday stormed out of the venue of a government function after some members of his media team were denied entry by security officials. The state government disbanded the media team the same day and placed Shaibu media activities under the Office of the Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Nahikari. The battle moved to the day of Shaibu's declaration for the governorship seat. The event, which was earlier scheduled to take place at the Ethno Hotels, GRA Abini, was shifted the night before when information filtered into town that one of Governor Obaseki's support group, Obaseki Ending Well, also scheduled an event at the same venue on the same day and same time. This forced Shaibu to look for an alternative venue and he chose a facility at the St. Paul Catholic Church off Airport Road in Benin. Shaibu, who said he had weathered unpleasant political stones, noted that nobody could hurt his ambition. The destruction of Shaibu campaign poster on December 11 by suspected agents of the state government also added fire to the reef. Speaking in Lagos Street after inspecting one of the dismantled billboards, the deputy governor said the destruction would not help. While at the opening ceremony of the correspondent chapel on December 19th, Shaibu also revealed that his office had not been paid a month's allowance due to the tension between him and his principal, Godwin Obaseki. He said that he had been running the office and doing other activities through goodwill and contributions from friends. He said, you know there is tension between the governor and I. For six months there had been no allocation to my office, so... Whatever I'm doing is from contribution from friends and my goodwill, and I'm still standing very strong. The rift between the two took another dimension as 354 million naira was allocated to the deputy governor's office in the 2024 budget. From findings, the governor's office got an allocation of 19 billion naira. The secretary to the state government's office got 8 billion naira. The House of Assembly, 13 billion naira, while the head of services got 968 million. When many thought the rift between the two was dying down, the weekly Tuesday mass, which was held in the compound of the deputy governor's new office, instead of the government house chapel, reopened the rift. An official in the chapel said they got a directive from the senior special assistant to Obaseki on religious matters, Reverend Osaige, to come and remove our things from the chapel, including the station of the cross, the pupils, and other items. The official added, I told him I would inform the deputy governor to know where to relocate the items, and we went to remove them the following day. I was shocked when I started hearing that I went to do a video. They ordered us to remove our things, which we did. However, Obasek insisted that nothing like the relocating of the chapel happened. He added, it is imperative to state categorically that the government house chapel is very much in operation and attending to the spiritual needs of the occupant of the government house. It is necessary to stress that the governor and his wife are ardent Christians and it is therefore illogical that they will shut down the chapel in the government house. We urge the members of the public to disregard the rumor as it bears no aorta of truth. The government will continue to promote religious freedom and harmony within the state, he added. However, the last episode in the face of may not have been seen as the outcome of the PDP primaries on February 22 will determine the next twist in this unending rift.